Oh, it's great to be here. Come on. Turn around, tell somebody next to you, I got a green light, I got a green light, I got a green light. It's a go church, it's a go church. Thank y'all. That was wonderful. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, I love this church. Oh, I love this church. I can lay down that foyer out there. Just love this church. I love me some go church. I love you. I'm so thankful I got to be a part of this. I was begging Pastor JC. I was like, oh, I love Tim Timberlake. He's a dear friend of uh, our family. Matter of fact, Tim Timberlake married my son and my daughter-in-law. That's, he's family to us. Tim Timberlake is deep family. And then I thank God for Bishop Kevin. I've been there several times. There's Ruach Conference. I know he's a dear friend of your pastor. And, and But I'm going to tell you what. They don't love you like I love you. I'm just saying that right now. I, I mean, I'm grateful for the word of the Lord. But I'll go to your house. Come on, let's go sod some yards. Let's go. We'll go and clean out your garbage can. We'll, we'll, well, I'll go up in your garage right now. I'll get, that, I'll get them roaches out of that garage right now. I love you. I love you. I love you. You know why? Because I love your pastors. And, and I love the, the legacy of this church. I always honor Pastor uh, and JC and Kim's father, Brother Al. Can we clap our hands for the founder? And He the real man. He the real bishop. I love that man. And, and the, the uh, respect that we have for him and, and the respect that I have for your pastors. I just, I love Pastor JC and Kimberly. My wife and I, uh, we think about them all the time. We talk on the phone nonstop. Uh, we're just like little, you know, just little buddies. We, what you doing? Where are you going? Uh, what, you, what you doing? <laughs> you know, we're talking about Georgia Bulldogs and Atlanta Braves and you know everything else in the world. Uh, I, I'm struggling because I got a daughter who graduated from LSU. I got a daughter-in-law that graduated from Alabama. I got a son that graduated from Alabama. I got a daughter that graduated from Alabama, and so and uh, and you know and 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 I'm just and I'm a, I'm a Duke basketball fan, so I was so confused. I'm going to get y'all to pray for me. But uh, again, I love your pastor's integrity, stewardship, uh, uh, one of the great preachers of the word. You get good doctrine. You get good theology. We're living in a day where you need good theology, good, strong, hey, word of God. That's who your pastors are. They love you. You, you don't talk to pastors JC and, and Kimberly and, not, and they don't start talking about you, which I think is so important today in the world that we're living in. This is not about them. Thank God that God is blessing them. God has anointed them. But God's using them, and he's blessing you. And I'm just so grateful for you. You're the real deal. Uh, I, I love how you love your wife. You love your family. You love your people. And we just honor you as our pastor. Can we clap our hands for our pastor? Honor our pastors. I'd walk from Birmingham just to come have coffee with Pastor JC because I'm always inspired by him and this church and how it's growing. I, I was praying for you today. I'm going to get in the word here in just one moment, but I was praying for you today, and I know that you're in a great season of growth. I know the weekends. I've been able to experience the weekends here, uh, here and of course, the other locations, those that are watching online, and that's why I wanted my son and, and daughter to come see you again because we're, we're just great. I've got a good friend of mine, Leighton German. He leads our students there. Where my ghost? Where my go youth at? Where my go youth? Woo! Say, hey, you know what you gotta love about students? When you mention like go youth, you always go woo! Anywhere in the world when you mention students, it's just universal. Where my go youth at? I lost you just then. Come on, let's try it one more time. Where my go youth at? There we go. That's how it works. And uh, but the, the one of the things that. You know, and, and so Leighton leads our students. And J.P. Brumfield uh, is just a, a dear friend. We've known each other 30 years. And can I clap our hands for our two guests that are here with us? Great pastors. But two things I wanted to say. You, you know, what I love, I get to travel and be at, at, at churches. And I think there's two uh, identification markers. I think there are two markers that God has done in this church. One is you love the next generation. I think that is vital right now. If you're going to experience revival in a church, so often God brings revival through students. Let me say that one more time. So often God brings revival through students. And thank God for a church that makes space for that. It says that's a priority here. That's valuable here. We're going to do everything we can to make sure students are welcomed and they're valued and, and they have a priority in what we do. And, and guess what? That doesn't happen without generosity. And so thank God for a generous church, faithful in your tithe and offering. Why? So that you can keep seeing generations 
and those that have not yet heard the gospel, hear the gospel. And can I tell you something? When you put those two things together, a church that has a heart for generations and a church that is a generous church, I'm, I, I've learned that God loves that church. Because the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. And I'm grateful for how you've always been such a generous church. I think that's a good thing to be known for. I wouldn't want to be known as the opposite of that. Oh, that's that stingy church. Ain't nobody going up over there. And so thank God for that. And again, that's a reflection of leadership here. It's a reflection of good decisions uh, as a church that puts the priorities. The priority of God needs to be our priority. And I've watched that happen uh, through this church. So I'm just grateful for how you have a heart for the kingdom of God and you are faithful to the kingdom of God. You're helping us plant new churches. We're planting about 23 churches this fall uh, across the United States, a few international. We're planting churches in like Bowling Green, Kentucky. We're planting three or four churches in Colorado. Got a couple of churches planting in Canada. How many know some Canada people need some Jesus right about now? So when you're faithful in your tithe and offering, you go online to give, and you, 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 you do all these ways that we, we give consistently in priority, your leadership here and the integrity of these churches, let's go start this somewhere else so that other people can experience what we're experiencing. And I think it's very vital in the world that we're living in right now for people to be a part of a church that's alive. And it's a live church right here. I mean, it's alive. And so I'm grateful for your heart to be all about that. So bring you greetings from Birmingham. My pastor, Chris Hodges, loves your pastor. And I'm thankful for Church of the Highlands and all the great churches that we're working with. But then also, our family's doing well. Again, we've added. I, I met Lane, and, and when Dylan said, I, I found somebody, and I want you to meet her. And uh, I knew her for one hour, and I pulled my son aside. I said, listen, we really like her. Don't mess this up for us. So we, we'd like to keep her for a while. So, so Dylan won her over, and it's, it's good to have my, my daughter-in-law in the house. Y'all know what I'm talking about? My daughter-in-law. So we, we love this church and, and love this family. And you know the other thing, I like last night a revival like this. It doesn't end because it happens in us, and we'll talk about that. But I like moments like this because we can get a little fired up. It's Wednesday night. Uh, I, I love that we have some students here because I think that is so important. So it's going to be a little bit like we end in the youth camp. Y'all know what I'm talking about. We go in youth camp mode ending, and so we're going to have some fun at the end of the service. But I'll tell you the other thing I'm praying for. I've been praying all day long that God is going to fill people with the Holy Spirit. And, and I, I want to encourage you today. That's why I, I, I was praying that God would give us the green light. If you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit, we're believing God at the end of our service, at the end of our time, we're going to make space for that so that you and I can yield ourselves and, and we can be open to what God is going to do uh, because we're living in a world, if you're not careful, you get filled up with a lot of things. And it ain't the Holy Spirit. And life and pain and, and struggle and hurt can cause you to be filled up with all kinds of things. So we're going to empty ourselves, and, and I believe in God that we're going to get filled with the Holy Spirit. People are going to get prayer language, and, and we're going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, evidence of speaking in tongues, and God's going to do all those things. And uh, I've always felt like that that's something the Lord does. Man can't do that. The Lord does that. So we just ease into that and rest in the Lord uh, in those moments. So we're believing God. I want to talk for a few minutes around the idea of overflow overflow. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you so much for your word. Lord, we pray that you'd speak to us, God. We, we need more of you in our life. We need more of you in our life. So, Lord, we yield ourselves to you. We yield ourselves to you. In Jesus' name, and everybody said a good amen. Turn to the person next to you and say, I'm glad you made it to Revival. Come on, look at the other person that was your second choice and tell them, you look like you could use a little revival, my friend. I've been camping out on this scripture in Romans chapter 15, verse 13. I just love it, love it. I think the word of the Lord is saying something to me around it because it's encouraging me because if we're not careful in the world that we're living in, there's so many things that can get on you and get in you. Just dealing with people and navigating a pain and navigating the maze of personalities and working through different things in our job or in our school or, or in, with our, our family, all these different things. And I love what Romans says because this is the will of the Lord for every single one of us. No matter our background, no matter uh, our, our resume, no matter the good days or the bad days, 
God has a plan for our life. God has something he wants us to be filled with. He doesn't want us to be filled with bitterness and filled with anger and filled with hurt and filled with all these things that get bottled up inside. It's interesting how we use that phrase. This has been bottled up on the inside. Well, the Lord says, I want something else bottled up in you. Romans 15, verse 13 says, may the God of hope fill you. Think about that. May the God of hope fill you with all joy, not a little bit of joy, not partial joy. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. How many knows that's a dynamic duo? I'm walking in joy and I got peace. As you trust in him, trust in him so that you may overflow, there's that word, overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. I love that. I, I, I love what the Bible is saying right there. See, I, I came to Christ because a church had an outbreak of the Holy Spirit, had an outbreak of generosity, had an outbreak of wanting to reach other people, and one church planted another church in South Carolina in about 1980 and 1982. That second campus, that, that other location, all of a sudden, they started having revival. They started having growth, and they decided, hey, thank God for what's happening in the church, but thank God for what happens from the church. And so out of the overflow of the Holy Spirit in those precious people, they decided to do an outreach. See, I believe there's an indwelling that happens, but the indwelling is not just for me. There's an indwelling that wants to respond by an overflowing. And I am the result of that. I came to Christ because the church did that. All of a sudden, they did an outreach in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, 1982. And because of that outreach, uh, it impacted my heart. And, and I leaned into the gospel. It opened the door for me, opened up my eyes, made me realize some things about my life. And out of that overflow, out of that church having revival, because out of that revival, they release the mercies and the compassion and the care of their community. And so I gave my life to Christ out of that result because a church had revival. They went on mission. That's what God wants to make sure that you and I step into in our lives. I wrote down some things about that idea about overflow and, and, and thank God for what he does in us. And I don't know about you, I love when I feel the presence of God in worship. I love what happens in a church. I, I, what, what happened last night, what happens on a Sunday, and, and how we enjoy the presence of God together. There's nothing like corporate worship. I was up this morning, we were doing prayer at our church, and there we were gathered with, with hundreds and hundreds of people. Nothing like corporate prayer, nothing like being together, seeking God. Oh, I'm grateful for that, but guess what? It's just not for the building. It's for others. I wrote down some statements around that idea of there's an overflow that wants to take place in our life, and the enemy's always trying to stop that. But there is an overflow that's a mandate from God for you and I when we experience revival, when we experience healing, when we experience a new beginning. Here's the first thing I wrote down. What Jesus has done in us is not just for us. Oh, I'm grateful for what he does in us. I love when he brings me comfort. I love when, when maybe there's an anxiety and I read a scripture or I pray a prayer or I go to a go group or I, I read a devotional or, or all of a sudden I come to church and I meet with my team and in that moment I just sense the presence of God. I sense the comfort of the Holy Spirit. I love when he does something in us, but I have realized in all these years that what he does in us is not just for us. That this power, this presence needs to have an outlet. Lord, let it happen in our life. Let it happen in this hurting world. Here's the second thing I wrote down. What the manifestation brings is life on mission. Oh, don't you love the manifestation of the Holy Spirit? I love when the Lord manifests himself and you could sit around an altar or you could, in your car and you just, whoa, man, I feel like the Lord then came up in this Toyota. Wow, I feel the Lord here in my Prius. And I'm in my F-150, but man, Jesus then walked up in my F-150. I love the manifestation of the presence of God. You could sense it. You could feel it. 
We felt it during some of the worship. There were moments where you felt the manifestation that God's presence was here. But guess what? The manifestation brings a life. My life on mission. My lips for worship, but my life on mission. In the workplace. In the dorm room. Over here in the neighborhood. Come on, at the pickleball court. Come on, somebody. I've got a life on mission. It's an overflow. Third thing I wrote down, what the growing in God is producing is a going that glorifies God. I mean, I want to grow in God, but I'm not growing in God just to be some spiritual elitist where I can argue with people. I haven't seen a lot of people argued into the kingdom. I haven't seen a lot of people debated into the kingdom. I've seen a lot of people served into the kingdom. I've seen a lot of people loved into the kingdom. Hey, I've seen a lot of people prayed into the kingdom of God. But, you know, so, so when I'm growing in God, there's something that happens out of the growing. It begins to produce a going, not a spiritual elitist. I'm better than everybody else, nobody else. Nobody wants to be around that person. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Hey, let me tell you something. Pharisees are not attractive. But the laborer is. So there's things that happen. We're growing in God here at Go Church. We're growing in our Go Group. We're growing in our Go Track. We're growing in these things of God. We're growing, we're growing. But the growing produces a going. Let's go on that missions trip. Let's go on that serve day. Let's go across the street and help that neighbor. Let's go across the room, reach out to that person who's having a little moment in their life. Here's the fourth thing. What is the result of revival? There has to be a result of revival. If revival has no result, then I'm not sure it's revival. There's a result of revival. What is the result of revival? It is a release of the nature and character of God through my life in the here and now. How many knows it's not good when you get more spiritual and you get meaner? Oh, he's so spiritual. Man, he's hateful. That doesn't work. It's not going to get anybody saved. That's not going to populate heaven, plunder hell. You know, it's, it's not you get more spiritual and you get more impatient. You get more spiritual, you get more judgmental. You get more spiritual, and you become like a porcupine. Oh, come on, help me preach a little bit. It's not the goal of it all. No, no, no. The result of revival is in my life, in my family, to my kids, my husband, those around me, is the character and nature of God coming out of my life in the here and now. Well, I'm going to be real spiritual when all this happens. No, you're not. We spiritual right now. I'll be spiritual, I'll be kind, I'll be gentle, I'll walk in the fruit of the Spirit when these things happen. No, 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 no. The result of revival is now. In my valley, in my battle, in my less than, in my lack, I'm walking in the character and nature of God. It's being manifested. There's a, there's a result all these things we feel. Here's the fifth thing I wrote down. What happens in this place, oh, can't be confined to this place. Oh, oh, we're at a live church. We're a go church. We're a going church. Great commission. I'll tell you something about your pastors. They're great commission people. They're on mission. Oh, thank God for the manifestation, but we're on mission. What happens in this place can't be confined to this place. It has to be let out has to go public, has to go to the neighborhood, has to go to the workplace, has to go into the family, has to go to my friends, has to go out into my life. It has to go public because that's how we walk in the will of the Lord, how we experience the, the good things of God. And I wouldn't be here if a church and a group of people, a small group, would not have decided that, yeah, there's an overflow and the overflow of joy and peace, and, and it's, we're trusting in God, and, and it's happening by the power of the Holy Spirit, but it has a ripple effect. There's a domino effect that takes place. 
I'm going to be a witness because I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit is in me, Holy Spirit's going to come out of me. I love these verses. I, I think there's some incredible scriptures around this. I just want to say what the Bible has to say around this, this idea. I'll read you four or five of them. The first one is John 7. Just thinking about a spirit-filled life that we've been filled. So we've been, Lord, I've been filled for purpose. I've been filled so it can't be contained. I wrote this in my journal the other day. I've been filled to spill. Come on, somebody. I've been filled up with the Holy Spirit, with healing, with mercy, with grace. With new, so I can spill it out to other people. In my world as a single mom, in my world as a senior adult, my world in middle school, I'm going to spill out what the Lord's doing in my life. Here's what it says in John 7, verse 37 through 39. I'll just go through these scriptures. See, I believe that faith cometh by hearing the word of God. And some of you right now are, are wondering, can I be filled with the Holy Spirit? I prayed before to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I never got my prayer language. I worried about all these things happening in my life. And, and I've had this problem, this issue. But the word of God is going to increase faith. There's going to be a faith that increases. John 7, 37 through 39. On the last day, the greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said with a loud voice. I like that. I think sometimes we think Jesus only has an inside voice. What you saying? I, I can't hear you. It's like he has a loud voice. Let anyone who is thirsty come to me. What an invitation in a dry and thirsty world. He can come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, there it is. Whoever believes in me is a candidate, is an opportunity. Whoever believes in me, Scripture says, rivers of living water will flow from within them. I love how he says this. It's so simple. I think sometimes we talk about the infilling of the Holy Spirit. It gets real spooky. gets real odd. gets real scary. Man, somebody's going to shake me. Somebody's going to throw me on the ground, going to get me in a headlock. If somebody puts you in a headlock when you're trying to get filled with the Holy Spirit, we're going to arrest them. We don't do that here at this church. It's not what we do here at this church. We let the Holy Spirit fill you. It says, by this he meant the Spirit whom those who had believed in him were later to receive. They already believed in him. But the Bible is saying there's something else to receive. Receive means a gift. Up to this time, the Spirit had not yet been poured out, had not been given since Jesus had not been glorified. Can I announce to you that Jesus Christ is glorified? He is sitting at the right hand of the Father. He is King Jesus. So the Spirit has been given. And if, I, if you like me, I need everything I can get. Because I'm dealing with some folk. I need everything I can get. And I was raised a little Catholic boy. A little Italian Catholic. I knew nothing about anything. But I knew that I wanted everything. When I came to Christ at 18 years old, I wanted everything God had for me. I didn't completely understand it. Didn't feel like I was a candidate for all of it. But I believe the cross was enough. He paid the price. So I stood before the Lord, said, give me everything you got. Here's what Acts says in Acts 1a. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. Everywhere you go, I want you to distribute me because you're filled with me. When you go there, oh, I, I went somewhere one time, and they said, listen, we don't, we don't really talk about Jesus. <sighs> That's going to be a real problem. <laughs> she said, I just don't really need you talking about Jesus. I'm in a jam. I told her, I said, you have jammed me. I said, because he kind of goes everywhere I go. <laughs> I can't leave him in the truck. No guarantees. You get what you get. Don't throw a fit. Come on. Romans, I mean, uh, Acts 4, verse 31 through 35. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. Everybody says shaken. And they were all filled. 
with the Holy Spirit, spoke the word of the Lord boldly. All the, I love the result of revival. Look at the result. It's incredible. I mean, they, they, they got filled with the Holy Spirit. Look what they did. All the believers were of one heart and mind. Thank God for unity in the church. No one claimed that their, their possessions were their own. They weren't stingy. Holy Spirit filling you up will, 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 will fill you up and run out the stingy. And they all shared everything. They just started sharing. I got a donut, you have a donut. I got a biscuit, you want a biscuit? They were sharing. I know it's humorous, but it's the truth. A filled up people will spill over Jesus. With great power, the apostles continued to testify of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And God's grace was powerfully at work in all of them, that there were no needy persons among them. Lord, let it happen. For from time to time, those who owned land, houses sold them, brought the money from the sale. They were so blessed. They looked at their life, thought, wow, I've been so blessed. God's been so good to me. I think I want to be faithful in my tithe. I want to be a blessing to others. I want to give offering. I want to help plant that campus. I want to dig that well. I want to go touch those people that need school supplies. I want to go help people that are struggling with addiction. All these different things. I just got to go do that because I'm so filled up with God. I don't know why I'm holding on to all this stuff. So they just brought it. They just laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed. See, something was shaking them. Something was filling them. It was the Holy Spirit, and then it was distributed to anyone who had need. Can I have a good amen? amen. That's why this church does serve things. That's why you put on those great churches. and you go into this community and say, we love you. We care about you. We don't want anything from you. We want to be a blessing to you. It's the heart of the New Testament. I love this uh, verse, Ephesians 5, 18. You hear this. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Let me just help you with something. You don't want your life defined by debauchery. That's just not a good goal in life. That's trouble. A lot of trouble happens with debauchery. That just means wild living. Had enough of that. Come on, somebody done enough of that in my life so don't fill your life with debauchery no 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 instead be filled with the spirit be filled with the spirit then I love Acts 4 20 as for us we could not help speaking I can't help myself I've been filled with the Holy Spirit I can't help that when I'm filled I can't help that I spill I can't help that I overflow the character and nature of God. We cannot help speaking about what we have seen and what we have heard. I'm so sorry I bumped into you. I spilled Jesus all over your blouse. I didn't mean to get it all over your carpet. It just, when you bumped me, when I, it just all came out. Because that's what comes out of me. Not perfect. Still, God's still working on me. Come on, church. I'm still navigating a few things in my life. I'm, I'm still sorting through a few things, but I'm asking for the Holy Spirit every day to fill me and to refill me. And I'm going to walk in it, don't understand it all, but I'm going to say, Lord, I want everything you have for me. I never forget when I was at a youth camp. I'd been saved for about a month. I went to a youth camp, and the speaker asked you, anybody wants to get filled with the Holy Spirit? Again, I was like, yeah, I've been filled with all this other stuff. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. I came forward. I said, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Everybody around me started speaking in tongues, but me. And I remember thinking, well, there must be something wrong with me. I remember God had to deal with me about his grace and mercy. And I remember a, a, a guy praying for me just said, hey, did you ask? I said, yes, sir. That you received. All that will happen. Don't worry about all that. It will all happen. Be ready. I was driving down the road in my Celica Two weeks later, and I started praying, Lord, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Began to speak in tongues in my celica, driving down the road. Over and over again in my life, the Lord has manifested himself like that. Why? Because, I, I, Lord, I, I, I want to empty myself so that I be filled. Because you know what? We need it in the world we live it in. How many of the world are crazy right now? Oh, Lord. Lord. I was at the Oklahoma City Rental Car Center three days ago, trying to change out my rental car. 
And I'm in there, nobody's around. I'm just over there. I find a little booth at the Hertz, and there's three or four people in there, and it was everybody trying to get the cars. People impatient had a rental car. I, you better be full of the Holy Ghost when you go rent a car these days. <laughs> just, I'm just giving you a little warning. Get filled with the Holy Ghost before you go to rental cars. And so I'm in there, and there's some ladies in there. There's a man working at Long Line. We all, we all in a hurry, everybody in a hurry. But I, I had a church that night, and I woke up that morning. I'd read my devotional. I'd read my devotional. It was about 745 in the morning. I was feeling all right. I was okay. A little having to wait in line, trying not to, you know, get impatient. I was trying to be kind as much as I could. I was waiting on my, And then all of a sudden I look up and there is a car or somebody jumps in a truck, starts skirting up through some landscaping, drives up on up top of the building, drives down the side, Lord, on the side of the building. There's people on the sidewalk screaming, jump the curve, hit some rocks, bust the tire. Somebody jumps in there and stole a truck. I'm right there. I'm right here. I'm watching the whole thing take place. The guy, the guy that stole the truck rode by me and looked at me. I was like. <laughs> guy starts running after I said, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't run after him. Oh, we don't know him. This, this, was, this was Tuesday. This was yesterday morning. And, 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 it's, and everybody, hey. People start, they got upset. One lady's like, I'm having a panic attack. I'm having a panic attack. She said, I'm sensitive. I'm sensitive. Another lady says, we're in danger. We're in danger. They're all coming. There's others. I was like, I finally had to say, y'all, y'all calm down. I stood in front of the little sliding door and I said, I got y'all. I'm a big man. I'm a double X man. They not coming up in here on me. I am. I'm, I told him, I said, I'm a man of God. Calm, y'all calm down. Cause about three ladies about to go down. I'm like, I'm gonna have to do CPR for three ladies. <laughs> My panic attack. Them. She said, I'm scared. I said, I'm not scared. They're gone. I got you. I'm like, I am. I am the Kurtz chaplain these days <laughs> I'm working for Hertz the world is crazy we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit hey not for all oh, not for goosebumps but for guardian angels I wrote down in my journal this morning, I am yielded to the Holy Spirit. That means I am shielded by the Holy Spirit. I'm yielded and shielded by the power of the Holy Spirit in my life because you need it. I mean, think about it. I was at a rental car. People trying to come up on me. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. We need everything God has for us, church. Every single one of us need everything God has for us. And we've got to, hey, and we've got to get emptied so that we can be filled. Because we live in a world, if we're not careful, all kinds of things can fill us up. And then we wonder what's coming out. Why is all this pain? Why is all this fear? Why am I having a panic attack? Why are all these things happening to me? What are we filling ourselves with? You fill yourself with debauchery, debauchery is coming out. You feel yourself with fear. Fear is coming out. Hey, guess what? I'm going to go old school because what's down in the well is going to come up in the bucket. That's just how it works. Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit tonight. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. I, I want to, I want you know, I, I, I didn't, I know this is going to surprise me. Anyway, I'm going to finish up with this. I know it's going to surprise you, but I didn't do real good in some courses at school. I did good in recess, not bad in home ec. I was a great office assistant. I could write a hall pass like nobody's business. I didn't like math, but I, I like science because I like the science project. Now this right here is a drink. Now you may look at it because really, it's really just water and sugar. Just water and sugar. But then they add something to water and sugar. It's called carbonation. Ooh, I love me a carbonated drink. 
on a hot day out there cutting that grass, give me that orange drink. Come on, somebody. Y'all know, hey, what about, hey, well, I don't know, hey, let me tell you something. I love, I love me a Mountain Dew. Where my Dr. Pepper people at? Love me a Dr. Pepper. Why, it's nothing like, nothing like a hot day, not like a working day, not like a day where you're working out in the sun and you all of a sudden drink. And what makes that drink amazing is not really the water and sugar. It is the carbonation that they put in this. Because you know what I love? Don't you love when you open a carbonated drink and you hear that sound? <laughs> it's the sound of heaven <laughs> on a hot and dry, thirsty world. But how many, how many's ever opened it up before and it's been flat? You're like, I thought that thing had, I thought it had some fizz in it. Where did the fizz go? Why did it trade the fizz out for flat? Can I tell you something? The devil is okay with the flat church. He's okay with the flat believer who's just water and sugar. No, 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 no. But the enemy is afraid of a fizzy church. See, go church is a fizzy church. The enemy is afraid of a fizzy church now. But when you look at it, you think, okay, but here's what they do. See, they, they infuse, they put carbonated gas, CO2 gas that is carbonation. And here's what it does. You can't see it right now. Why? It's embedded into this, this liquid. It's, it, a lot of scientists say it's hibernating right now. See, it's there, but you can't see it. But it's there. All you have to do is shake it up. Or you open. If you shake it, whoo, there it is. There it is. See, until it is shaken or it opens, it's, it's potential energy. And so many people have potential energy. Oh, oh, God's put some things in you. He's put a dream in your heart. He's, he's called you to lead a small group. He's put a blessing in your life. There's potential. Oh, and let me tell you something. Potential that is not unleashed or open up does not help anybody. You know the person who's about to bless somebody, but then never blesses them? I was going to give you a compliment last month, but I held it back. You, you didn't help me none. You, you, you didn't help me. What I have to do? I have to open up the compliment. See, it's potential energy. So many have potential. I can make a difference. Potential at work. Potential in my family. So many students have potential. But you, you, what you want to do is you want to be, and this has a lot of potential energy, potential taste, re potential refreshing. But guess what we got to do? We got to open it up. And when you shake it or you open it up, the potential becomes what they call kinetic energy. Now all of a sudden, when that air and you open it because it's in there, when you begin to open it, all of a sudden, that gas and, and, and that carbonation, it has to get out. There's got to be a move. It's got to move because it's in there. And if you shake this up and you open it, guess what? It can go places you never imagined it would go. How many's ever had a drink go off six months later, you find sticky? Come on, somebody. This is an illustration to understand. I'm just giving you kind of like, it's kind of like this. Just a visual to help you understand what God wants to do with revival and how God wants to fill us with the Holy Spirit. So that when we're shaken, somebody comes up on you, it hurts. Somebody cuts in line. When somebody comes to you and says, I don't know what I'm going to do. My husband's leaving me. When somebody stops you and you begin to pray with them and they say, hey, I'm on a journey of sobriety. Oh, come on, somebody. Don't get quiet on me now. I'm trying to find sobriety in my life. There's a shaking going on. And the Lord is saying, I, I, I want to take the cap off of the church. I want to take the cap off. Because guess what? The enemy is okay if the cap's on. He fine. Get emotional. Feel good. Worship. Lord, Jesus, Lord. send it on down, Lord. Send it on down. Lord, let your Holy Spirit come on. He okay with all that in the bottle. 
He's fine with all that. He's good. He's okay. We can wear church merch. He's okay with that. You can wear a church hoodie. He's okay with all these things happening. But he does not want it released. Because you know what? This is an amazing dream. This can help people. But right now, it is trapped in a plastic prison cell. But it wasn't born to stay in a plastic prison cell. It wants, it wants to come out. Look. I want out. Can I tell you what? We have a young generation that's plaques, that's trapped in a plastic prison cell called an iPhone. And, and we've, got, we've got generations that are trapped in a plastic prison cell called debt, called comparison, called fear, shame, guilt, unbelief, anger, disappointment, these, 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 these unrealistic expectations. Hey, how many people are trapped in the prison cell of they've been offended? Well, I've been offended. I'm going to hold back now. I'm going to keep it all back. I'm not going to be used by God. I'm not going to connect with the church. I'm going to hold back now. And it's like, no, 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 no. The, the, the enemy is okay if we keep the cap on. But Jesus is saying, we need to take the cap off. I need to shake you. Because then it can be distributed. Can I have a good amen? I don't know about you, but I think I want to take the cap off. I'll come down here on the front row. I'll just take it off. Oh, look at all. Why? Because you know, you know it's going to spill over. I'll walk down the aisle and shake it. Well, be back, be, you'll be backing off of me. No, no, no. Why? Because you know you're going, it's going to happen. We're going to find sticky a year from now during the Christmas cantata. Cause you know, but I think we ought to take it off. Do y'all think we ought, to, we ought to take the cap off? So here's what I'm going to do. We're going to do it for a minute. It's just going to be fun, Bob. But, uh, where are all my go youth? Where's all my go youth? If you're under 18, you're go youth. Jump up to your feet. Go youth. Where are you at? All my go youth. All my go students. Come down here to the front real quick. We're going to come all down here to the front. Hey, let's everybody stand. We're going to do this. Y'all come right here. And I, I think Lake's going to help me. And I think he's got two other volunteers. We're going to show an example. Come down here. We're doing an illustrated sermon. All my students right here. How many are fired up right now? How many are fired? Where's all my students that are fired up? <laughs> Say, we're going, to, we're going to do this. We're going to get fired up. Then we're going to pray for people. But here's what we're going to do. So let's, uh, let's, here we go. Don't shake it up yet. Okay. But we're going to shake it up. Shake, 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 shake. It's just not Taylor Swift that can shake things. Okay, just want to tell you that real quick. So here we're going to do. So, hey, because I'm going to tell you, when you shake this, something's going to happen. So let's step back on this carpet right here. Right here on the carpet, okay? Okay, so how many, hey, shake it a little. Look at that, look at that. Yeah, no idea. Oh, yeah. How many want to open it right now? You want to get in close, get in close, get in close, get in close. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to open this. This is going to be amazing. Hear me? Come on. We've been filled to spill. Okay, we're, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this. Say, so, hey, are y'all fire? Are y'all ready? You got? Hey, got it. You guys gonna open it? Just go for it. Just open. Okay, I'm, we're gonna do a countdown. So we're all gonna count down, church. Revival. Hey. Can we clap our hands for our illustrated sermon, preaching the gospel? Uh, I, Pastor JC, I will pay for the carpet cleaning. I promise you, I will 
send you a check for the illustration uh, now that I have Sprite all over me. Uh, but here, here's the thing I was thinking about. So I think it's interesting. Let's see if I can get this thing back up. Look at this. What? See, the Holy Spirit wants to fill us. So when we ask Jesus to be Lord of our life, what are we doing? We're, we're emptying ourselves. Wow. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are new. So we're asking for God to, so Lord, forgive us. Get all that debauchery out of my life. Because if, if, it's, if, if, if I'm being filled with pain and addiction and all the crazy thing the world has to offer, that's, that's so often we do. Why? Because we're trying to medicate the pain. And, and then all of a sudden we wonder why that comes out. Why we, we don't want to live. Why we, 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 why we, we say such negative things about ourselves, and why, why we're so offended. But then Jesus says, I, I want to forgive you. I want to make you clean. I want, to, I want it to be a fresh start. Okay? And then we empty ourselves, and then he fills us back up with this Holy Spirit. And every single day, we can be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's what I did when I was 19 years old. I asked for the Holy Spirit to fill me. And then God filled me with the Holy Spirit. And there's a prayer language that comes with it. I mean, it's just an amazing thing because Jesus forgives us of our sin, but the gift of the Holy Spirit, it's a gift. We can receive it. And then we pray, Lord, give me, give me this prayer language. I speak, I speak in tongues. I ask God to help me. God filled me with the Holy Spirit. I've been speaking in tongues since I was 19 years old. There's a power to it. And a pastor could take you through this and we could work through all these things. But I am believing God that God is going to fill people with the Holy Spirit tonight. You see, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want, to, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So we're believing God that that's going to happen. So let's do this. If the, all the students stay down here because it's awesome to have you here. Just step back about four feet. We're going to pray. Y'all could go down there. Like Y'all could jump down there. So we're going to pray. Let's shut our eyes for a moment. I'm going to ask our prayer team to come forward. All the prayer team, just come down here in the front. Let's shut our eyes and let's say, Lord, remove every barrier in my life. I repent of my sins. Jesus to be Lord of my life. So we remove every barrier. Now, Lord, right now, we request the gift of the Holy Spirit. Say this, I want the free gift of the Holy Spirit. I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Now, what I want us to do we're going to go back into worship. I'm going to pray for us because I think there are many of you that say, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit and, and you want the free gift. And I believe God's going to do that to each of our hearts. And when you do that, we're going to pray for you. We're not going to shake you, but I'm going to ask our prayer team just to pray for you. Lay hand on you, just real gentle. Not, not, not trying to draw attention to anybody. We're going to pray for you. It's exactly what happened to me. And we're just going to ask God to release his prayer language in us. Then Pastor JC will come in a minute, give us some instruction. But I'm going to pray for you. How many of you, every head bowed, every eye closed, you just say, Dino, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want everything God has for me tonight. I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, and, and I'm believing God. Just lift up your hand and say, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to pray one more prayer. And then if you raised your hand, I want you to come forward, and our prayer team's going to pray for you. All these students are going to be down here praying for you. And the ushers will help you get through and get to somebody. We're just going to spend some time. We're not going to be in a hurry. We'll stay here as long as we need for people to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So, Father, I pray right now for every person in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray right now, Father, Lord, that you touch every hungry heart. Lord, you said that you feel up when there's a hungry heart. So, God, we pray right now, Lord.
Lord, just like we saw that illustration, Lord, and, and Lord, we empty our life. We ask you to be Lord of our life. Cleanse us from anything in our life that shouldn't be there. And we ask for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. But more importantly, we want to be a witness and we want to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit in our family, in our world. Lord, we want you to be with us. So Lord, I pray that hunger arises in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit right now, just slip out of your seat. Come forward. We're going to pray for you. Come on. If you raise your hand to be filled with the Holy Spirit, come on. We're going to have an altar call. We're going to spend some time around the altar. Come on. Let's worship for a moment. Then we'll pray. Come on. Let's worship. Let's worship. Let's worship. Let's worship.